right, all right, excited to be joining you this morning from the comfort of your own home. But like Pastor Bailey said, next week we get to open our doors again. And I want to challenge, I want to challenge a whole lot of you that are watching. And because here's the reality for so many of us with now this second lockdown, we become very comfortable in the way that we're doing church. And now, hey, I, I don't really have to get up. I'm kind of taking in it at home and this is nice and this is amazing. I want to challenge you to push yourself to get out of your house and next week to join us here. There's something that happens. It's not the building, but there's something that happens when we gather in person, whether it be in a building, whether it be outside, wherever. And that's why the Bible says, do not forsake the gathering together of the saints when we get together. And I'm, I appreciate online and I appreciate technology and what we've been able to do and how we've been able to stay doing this each and every single week. But there is something that happens when we gather together. So I'm going to challenge you. Those of you who have become very comfortable in your church experience, we're still going to continue our online, but the worship's going to lo look a little bit different in all of that. But we want to, we want to see you out here. We want to see you in the building. And so again, we're following all the protocols that need to be taken and, uh, and we're, we're excited that you're going to be joining us today. We are starting a brand new series called don't touch the cheese. Don't touch the cheese. And what is this series about? This is all about being offended. And, and I know this in this day and age, nobody gets offended, right? You're sitting at home. You're not offended. You might even be offended at the shirt I'm wearing today or, or the, the coffee that I drink. I don't know. We get offended so easily. And so the, the heart of this series is how do we avoid in this day and age being offended? And if we are offended, what do we do? And so we're going to look at things that like over the next couple of weeks about forgiving betrayals, because that's the biggest thing. When we're betrayed, when somebody really hurts us, how do we forgive in that moment? We're going to talk about how do we forgive ourselves? Because so many of us carry that weight and that burden uh, of when we do something or when we experience something and we take the blame and the guilt and the shame. So we're going to look at forgiving yourself. And then we're going to look at how do we forgive God? Because some of us get so mad and so bitter and we shake our fist at God and we actually think it is God that has done this. It is God that has allowed this. And we get so frustrated and discouraged. And so we're going to look at those three different ways of forgiveness. But today we're going to ease into it because uh, we want to make it palatable for you. We're going to ease into it. But I believe today's message is going to speak to you. I believe it's going to challenge you. I believe it's going to uh, invoke some things on the inside of you. Uh, we're going to talk about forgiving the small little things, the small little offenses that you and I, that we pick up every single day, the small things that actually lead us to bitterness and actually hold us back from experiencing what I believe God wants for every single one of us, freedom. And now, here's a funny question. And so if you're with somebody in the room, and I want you to be honest, Honest, again, it's a safe place, but you would say, how many, you know, somebody that is easily offended. If you do raise your hand, if you know somebody that's easily offended, if they're in the room with you, point them uh, out in the room and say, hi, you're easily offended. They might just get offended at that. Who knows? But anyways, we all know somebody who's easily offended, right? We get offended at the simplest things. And most of us, we find ourselves offended, annoyed, bothered, hurt by small, insignificant things. The majority of the time, it's a small, insignificant things. Man, you just look at your own life and the things that you get kind of offended by. Somebody rolls their eyes when you're talking to them and you make a statement and they roll their eyes. What happens? You're like, what? They don't believe me. They, they, they don't, they're not taking me seriously. Uh, you get offended. Somebody, uh, the tone of their voice, all of a sudden the tone in their voice changes and, and it raises a little bit and they're a little bit more confrontation. You think oh, I'm getting offended. How about this one? You're driving in traffic. Nobody here gets offended driving in traffic, right? Man, when I am driving in traffic, one thing that I struggle with when you let somebody in, you know, when you do that kind thing and you let somebody in and they don't wave, come on, it is just, you, you got to give the thank you wave. It is just right. It's the rules of the road. And when they don't give the thank you wave, I'm like, I can't believe they didn't just wave at me. All you got to do is say thank you. And it's so hard. And, and we get offended at that. Some of you are laughing. Oh, Pastor Rob. Yeah, you're just too, too extreme. Yeah, you're the type that when you text somebody and then all of a sudden they, they start to respond and you can see it because it says red and you get the dark bubbles and then all of a sudden it goes blank. You're thinking, why are they not responding? I know they've seen it. I know they've seen it. How come they're not responding? What are they mad? Are they upset? I can't believe they're not responding to me right away. 
We get so offended. How about this one? You post something on social media and, and that one person never likes what you post. They like everything else that everyone else posts, but they never like anything else you post. And then all of a sudden they do the unpardonable sin on social media. They unfollow you or they unfriend you. And you're like, oh my goodness, my heart is broken. I can't believe this. I am offended. See what happens when we're offended. We're quick to judge. We're quick to condemn. We're quick to call foul and we are offended. And I'll tell you this, let me just put this truth out there and just kind of lay the foundation. If you are on a continuous search to be offended, you will always find what you're looking for. If you are on a continuous search to be offended, you are always going to find what you are looking for. And, and I hope you understand that there is never, ever, 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 ever a win in living offended. You're not going to win at anything in life. I've never found somebody saying or myself saying, oh man, I am so much better because I'm bitter. Man, it feels so good to hold on to this offense. I'm having such a great day because I'm offended over something so small. Man, I can honestly tell you my marriage is stronger because I'm carrying this grudge against my spouse. My relationships with my friends are so much richer because I'm offended at them. I'm upset at them. I'm actually closer to God and I believe I'm making such an incredible difference in this world because I've accumulated all of these small offenses that I've let get under my skin and I'm so much happier today. I've never heard that from anybody's mouth. Never once, not once have I ever heard that. Can I tell you this? Your life is too short and your calling is too great to be offended by something small. Your life is too short and your calling too great to be offended by something so small. You don't believe me? Let's look at what it says in the Bible and, and how do we begin to live a life where we can't stop offenses from coming, but we can stop picking them up. We can stop living with them. And it says this in Proverbs 19, 11. And I hope you got your Bibles because I want you to underline some things. I want you to highlight some things. I want you to take some notes today. But Proverbs 19, 11, and here's an incredible key for you. And this is kind of the, the base for what we're doing today. Proverbs 19, 11 says, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Let me read that again. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Everyone say this. I want you to say it. If you're in your living rooms, if you're in your bedrooms, if you're in your kitchen, if you're on your devices, whatever, I want you to say this. Say, I'm over it. I want you to type it out. Say, I'm over it. Yell it out in your house as loud as you can. I'm over it. See, there is power when we can overlook an offense. There is power when we say, I am not going to let this dictate and determine how I'm going to respond. I am not picking this up. I am over this. It doesn't matter what you did. doesn't matter what's going on. Guess what? I am over it. And we need to get to the place as followers of Jesus, you and I as followers of Jesus, how do we get over an offense? Because that's what a lot of you are asking. Rob, I live offended. Man, I'm offended every single day. Somebody looks at me the wrong way, I'm offended. Somebody doesn't text me, I'm offended. Somebody doesn't respond, I'm offended. Somebody says something negative to me, I am offended. How do we grow past these daily temptations to be offended, for us to pick up those temptations and to, to fall right into the traps and the schemes of the enemy. I'm going to give you one big statement. And this is a big statement. And then we're going to try to unpack this a little bit. But this statement, this one big statement is the truth for you. And if you can learn how to do this in every single situation and circumstance, if you can learn how to do this, you are going to be able not to avoid being offended, but you are able, you're going to be able to live so even in an offense. You say, I'm not going to pick that up because offenses are going to come every single day. There's going to be an opportunity for you and I to be offended every single day. So what do we do? We need to learn how to close the gap with love. Now you're probably thinking, what, what, what does that even mean? What does that even, close the gap with love? Rob, what are you even talking about? Well, Proverbs 10 verse 12 in the ESV version says this, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. 
Love covers all offenses. I actually had this asked to me on Thursday night after service. Robbie said, hey, that's nice that, that we can forgive the small things, but what about big offenses? What about the big things that happen? I don't see any distinguishing between there. It says love covers all offenses, small and big. And so it is up to you and I that doesn't matter the offense that we need to learn how to fill the gap with love. Way easier said than done. Why? Why do we fill that gap with love? There is a dynamic that exists between every interaction that you will have in your life. And, it is ra- and we rarely recognize it. There is a gap between an action and our reaction. A gap between what happens to us and how we are going to respond to us. There is always a gap. And so guess what? You and I get to choose what we fill that gap with. In the moment before we respond, after there is an action against us, after something is said, after something is done, how do we respond? There is a gap. What are we going to put in that gap? What are we going to fill in that gap? And we got to learn how to fill it with love. I'll give you a perfect example. I think it was last Wednesday night, we were at the grocery store, my wife and I, and we go through the self-checkout aisle, and uh, now that they've kind of created it, it used to be that they give you that small platform, you had to try to fit all your groceries on that small platform. Now you're allowed with this whole COVID stuff, you can keep this stuff in your cart, and so my wife was kind of bagging, and I was scanning, and I'm a master scanner now at the grocery store. I, as grocery store, I take that gun, and I'm scanning everything, and I'm like, boom, 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 and putting everything in its place and my wife is bagging it and by the time the 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 place was full we continued just to bag in our thing and so I would scan it up top and put it in the bottom and she would bag it and we were almost done and then some lady from way over in line comes over and says excuse me are you stealing that stuff are you not scanning it are you taking it without paying for it I'm thinking, where the heck did this lady come from? All of a sudden, she's right out there, and she's calling us out like we're stealing things. And so, hey, action, reaction. How am I going to respond to this? How are we, how did I want to respond? I can't really talk about that here. But, but you know what I just said? She has no idea what's going on. I don't know what's going on in her life, so I'm not even going to kind of entertain this. I said, you are more than welcome to check our receipt when we're done. Thank you. And I just kind of kind of carried on. And, and I was, but I'm telling you, man, it was a moment that I had to make the choice. What am I going to fill this gap with? Because here's the deal. A lot of us, we interpret something, when something happens, we interpret it the wrong way. Because we don't know what's going on. We don't know the full scheme of things. And our humanity, at the core of it, we don't like to be called out. We don't like to be challenged. We don't like to be wronged, right? And so when that happens, we interpret things horrible. Can, can we be honest? We're horrible interpreters. When something happens, we are horrible interpreters. And we interpret the wrong thing. And then all of a sudden, instead of filling the gap with love, we fill it with something else. And that's, it's actually, when you study humanity and behavior, it's actually called the fundamental attribution error. That's what that's called when something like that happens. And this is what that error is. It is, we have a bias to attribute our own behavior to our circumstances while attributing somebody else's behavior to their character. Let me say that again. We have a bias to uh, attributing our own behavior to our circumstances. Hey, it's because of what's going on. This is why I'm like this, because of what's going on. And when somebody else does something, it doesn't matter what's going on. They're just nasty. They're just evil. They're they're wicked. wicked. If, If I did something to disappoint you, well, there's a reason, right? I give a reason. Well, it's because I'm going through this. It's because I'm struggling with this and, and I didn't really mean it. And if you do something to offend me, well, you're an evil person. Well, you're just wrong and you're just wicked. It's your character. You're mean and you're nasty. That's what it is. And that's what we do. We are horrible interpreters. Perfect example. You cut somebody off in traffic. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't see you. I, di- I, di- I didn't see you. Sorry, 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 my bad, my bad. Somebody else cuts you off in traffic. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that person. They are from the devil themselves. The devil is trying to kill me today. And we begin to hurl and, and think, man, I am so offended. I can't believe the way that person, how did that person even get a license? Did they get it from a box top sin and 10 stereo box top sins and get a free license? They can't drive. They have no right having a license. 
right? None of you have ever done that. Nobody, nobody, right? See, when we do something, sorry, sorry, my bad. I, I, did, I didn't mean to do that. Somebody else does something, then it's all out war. How do we fill the gap? We are always filling the gap with something. And if it's not love, what are we filling that gap with? Well, I'll tell you, a lot of the times what we fill the, the gap with and what the enemy wants us to fill the gap with is with accusations. The enemy wants you and I that anytime we have the opportunity to be offended when something is said or done and just before that reaction, he wants us to fill that gap with accusations. Why? Because he is an accuser. Read Revelations 12 that he is the accuser of the brethren. He stands accusing humanity day and night. He is always accusing you and I. He's accusing us of not being worthy. He's accusing us of being liars. He's accusing us of being filthy and foul, evil sinners. He's accusing us all the time. So it's just natural. He wants you to begin to fill that gap. Instead of filling it with love, he wants to fill it with, he wants you to fill it with accusations. He wants you to fill it with accusations. Why? Why does the enemy want us to fill that gap with accusations? Well, here's why. Because accusations, what they will begin to do in, in any situation, circumstance, they're going to begin to erode marriages. Man, if you're always filling your marriage with, with accusations and when, when something happens and you have an opportunity to be offended by your spouse and you begin to fill that gap with accusations, that's actually eroding your marriage. It's actually splitting friendships. It's actually destroying churches. When we begin to fill that that gap with accusations instead of love, it begins to wreak havoc. There's no good that will ever come of it. That's why God wants us to fill the gap with love. Man, it is when wisdom that you can overlook an offense. Everybody, I say it one more time, say, I'm over it. Come on, say, I am over it. Proverbs 17, verse 9, whoever would foster love covers an offense, but whoever repeats the matter separates close friends. Every single day, you and I are in that place where we have the opportunity to fill the gap with love or to fill it with accusations. Anytime, and you're in a store and somebody wrongs you, you're, 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 you're driving and somebody cuts you off, you're, you're texting somebody and they, and they don't respond the way you want them to do and, and you post something on social media and, and they, they discredit you or they call you out on it. And a lot of us, we have an opportunity to be offended. And what are we going to choose to fill that gap with? Because here's what, what I know. If we're willing to fill it with love, this is what love does. Love gives the benefit of the doubt, right? Love is always going to give the benefit of the doubt. Love is going to trust the other person. Love is always going to assume the best Love actually believes in the other person. And so when you begin to fill that gap with love, it's a whole lot harder to get offended. Why? Because you're overlooking it. And love covers a all offenses, not just some offenses. It covers all offenses. Whoever would foster love covers an offense. And, and so if you're a spouse and you're at home and, and as a guy and, and you hear your, your wife say this, hey, are you going to take the garbage out today? How do you interpret that? Hey, are you calling me lazy? Yeah, of course I'm going to get to the garbage. And, and that's how accusations, when you want to fill that gap with accusations, but you want to fill the gap with love, and maybe it's just a gentle reminder, and, and maybe you didn't see the garbage, or there's some new garbage that's there. And so I'm just curious if you remember to take it out. And, and how you fill that gap makes it a whole lot easier if you're going to live a life that's not offended. You text a friend and they don't respond and immediately, why aren't they responding? What the heck is going on? They're taking too long. Are they mad at me? Are they upset? I can't believe they're not responding. I need to talk to them right now. It's so important. I can't believe they're not getting back to me. You begin to fill it with accusations, right? What happens if you begin to fill it with love? Well, maybe they're busy. Maybe their phone died. Maybe I don't know what's going on. Maybe they need me. I, I, I don't know. And you begin to fill it with love and it's a whole lot easier not to get offended, Opportunity to get offended is going to be there every single day. You can't ignore it. It's not, going to, it's not going away. People are always going to rub you the wrong way. People are always going to get under your skin. People are always going to push your buttons. But it's up to you. How do you respond? How do you respond? How are you filling that gap? 
Because I'll tell you what the Bible says, and this is a scripture, I, I, I love performing weddings and, and because I think it's an incredible uh, opportunity in that covenant and, and a, a guy and a girl entering into that covenant. In Ephesians 4, 2, this is a scripture I read and I kind of speak over every single couple. Because I'm going to tell you, man, uh, and I tell the couples that marriage is work. It is hard work and love is not a feeling. And if you think love is a feeling, you are in for a rude awakening. Love is a choice that you got to make every single day. And it's in Ephesians 4, verse 2, and it says this, Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Because of your love. See, when you have love, all of a sudden, it's not about accusations. It's, hey, I understand, I love you, and it doesn't matter what's going on. My love is going to cover those offenses. My love is, is going to make a way for me to get over it, to see past it, because I'm not going to pick up this offense. Because believe it or not, it's not always about you. I know that's hard for some of you to believe. Believe it or not, it's not all about you. Your friend's not in a bad mood, maybe because of you. Your, maybe uh, the edge in their voice is not because of you or their careless driving is not because of you. Maybe somebody's just having a bad day. Maybe they're just distracted. Maybe they got some bad news. Maybe they're fighting a battle themselves. And for you to think that the world exists and, and everybody needs to bow and cater and make you feel good, I'm telling you, man, you're missing it and you will always live offended. Whoever covers an offense, whoever is able to see over it, I'm telling you, man, there is freedom when you do that because you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. The one on your left isn't perfect. The one on your right isn't perfect. None of us are perfect. And we need to learn how to give others the benefit of the doubt. Because anytime that we do something wrong or we kind of do something that irks somebody, we want the benefit of the doubt. Hey, listen, let me explain myself. Why don't we give it to others? Because we're too quick to fill the gap with accusations. We're too quick to fill it. Instead of filling it with love, we're, 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 we're too quick to fill it with accusations. They're doing this because they're just wrong. They're evil. They're nasty. They're mean. And that's what we begin to fill the gap with. Now, what happens if somebody is intentionally rude, blatantly rude, blatantly hateful? And can I tell you, they're out there. Those people are out there. You begin to call yourself a believer. There's going to be people who are, are, they're just blatantly hateful towards you. Man, I've had it happen so many times. And, and so whenever I experience that, whenever that goes on, whenever somebody is unnecessarily harsh at me, Earlier in my faith, I would say, that's it, man. Hair on the back and neck comes out and I'm in fighting mode and I'm going to go toe to toe. But now I'm thinking, what's going on in that person's life? What's going on in that person's life that they're so hateful, that they got so much bitterness, that they got so much resentment? Because I know this, hurting people hurt people. And instead of seeing in the moment and beginning to accuse, I just say, hey, listen, there's something bigger and so instead of getting offended, I want to learn how do I have compassion? How do I have compassion in that moment? Instead of being offended by, how do I have compassion for? And I'm telling you, you begin to think like that, it makes it way harder to pick you up a fence, even if somebody is blatantly hard on you, blatantly rude to you, challenges you in the middle of a grocery line saying you're stealing. And all of a sudden, everyone else is looking at you and thinking, is that guy, is he really stealing? And I could say, hey, listen, I got to defend myself. I got to protect myself. I don't know if she's having a bad day. I don't know what's going on in her life. And I just said, nope, but you can check my receipt. Bless you. And I, we just kind of went on and, and continued to do our thing. I, I'm learning and I'm getting better. I'm not perfect yet. I'm getting better. I'm getting better at filling the gap with love. I'm getting better every single time that I have the opportunity to be offended. I'm learning how do I fill that gap with love because I understand this. Offenses are way too heavy. They cost way too much. And their sole purpose for you being offended is to keep you trapped and ensnared. So you can never move forward in the fullness and the plans and the purposes that God has for you. So hey, don't touch the cheese. 
Don't touch the cheese. The opportunity to be offended, it is a trap every single time. Baiting you, saying, come on, pick this up. You have the right to pick this up. Man, that person wronged you. They hurt you. They offended you. You have the right to carry this. And the enemy would say, pick it up. Come on, just pick it up. Carry it with you just for a little bit. You have the right to nurse that. You have the right to be mad. You have the right to be upset. Or you can do what the Bible says. I'm going to overlook it. I'm over it. I am over it. I'm not picking this up. Proverbs 19, 11, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Say, I'm over it. I'm over it. And I'll tell you this, because a lot of people think, well, if I just, do I just got to pretend it didn't happen? Is that what you're saying, Rob? Just pretend like it didn't happen? I'm not saying that at all. Overlooking an offense is, is not the same as pretending it didn't happen. It actually is a conscious decision to let it go. To overlook an offense is a conscious decision to say, hey, listen, it's actually a form of forgiveness that I am not going to allow this to weigh me down. I'm not going to allow this to kind of dictate how I'm going to respond. I am overlooking offense because I'm seeing further and farther. And so this is a form of forgiveness. And now this is powerful. As we begin to unpack this a little bit when in this portion of scripture, when it says to that word overlook in the Hebrew is the word avor. It's, it's the Hebrew word avor. And it actually means this. It means to pass over. It actually means that. It actually means to pass over. And when you look at the ritual of passing over, what started way back in Exodus, when God said, we are going to do this, and I want you to put blood on the doorpost. And when you do that, it is a symbol that your sins have been forgiven, and the angel of death will pass over. So when we overlook an offense, we are literally passing over. We are saying, this is not going to bring death to me. This is not going to take me out. This is not going to take me down. But I am seeing over. I'm passing over it. And I'm seeing further and farther. I'm not going to allow this. I'm over this. I'm over this. I know this, that my, my calling is way too important to get hung up on this way too important. I'm over it. My calling elevates me. My purpose elevates me. I, I, I got, my friends don't invite me to a party. Who cares? I don't care. I'm over it. Someone makes a rude comment about you on Facebook or on Twitter or on Instagram. Who cares? I'm over it. I'm not going to let that dictate how I'm going to respond or that's not who I am. And I'm not going to give that any weight, any merit, any value. Guess what? I am over it. Somebody corrects your kids. Somebody challenges your kids. Hey, I'm over it. Maybe they just have their best heart and I don't know what they're going and they see something in my kids that I don't see. Can, can I tell you that happens? And so when someone challenges my kids, I kind of step back for a moment and say, hey, I'm over it. I'm not going to get offended at that. I'm, I'm, I didn't even see that in them. I'm glad you're pointing that out. I'm over it. I'm over it. Can you imagine if we can get there? If we can get there every single day that we're learning how to fill the gap with love instead of accusations. Can you imagine Jesus? Can you imagine Jesus living like we live, getting offended so easily? Jesus himself. Can you imagine there's Jesus just preaching a sermon and, and all of a sudden his disciples are there? He's like, hey, Matthew, man, man, my feelings are really hurt today because I, I saw you weren't paying attention in the sermon. That really hurt. Man, I put a lot of effort into that. Man, I was there and I was expecting that you would be better, more involved in that. Man, I'm really hurt, man. Guys, I don't know if I can go on. Did you see the way the Pharisees looked at me today? They looked at me with daggers in their eyes like they wanted to kill me. Maybe I'm not cut out for this. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this. I can't, I can't stop thinking about the way that they looked at me. Guys, can you believe it? Thomas didn't compliment me on my miracle. Man, I raised somebody from the dead and didn't even phase me. He didn't even ever come over and say thank you. He didn't come over and say that was really neat or anything like that. I, I can't believe it. he did not even say a thing. You're thinking, Rob, that's just crazy. We get offended over so much smaller things in our life. Every single day when, when I look I'm going to talk about inside the church. Let's not even talk about outside the church. When I see what people get offended by inside the church, it blows my mind. It really does. It blows my mind.
And I don't know where you are at. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know if you're offended, but chances are you've picked up an offense. Chances are you're holding on to that. Instead of dealing with it, you're actually kind of cradling it and coddling it and saying, I have a right to hold on to this. I have, I'm mad. I'm upset. And I have a right to hold on to this. See, here's the deal. You're filling the gap with accusations. We need to learn how to fill the gap with love. And that's way easier to roll off the tongue than it is to do it. And you don't believe me? Try to do it next time you have the opportunity to be defended. Try to do it the next time somebody says something nasty or evil or even flat out lies about you. And you got to fill that gap with love. You'll find out how hard it really is. It's possible. Jesus, his mission was all about love. And that is our mission. It is all about love, to show the love of God. Every single day, you and I, that we have the opportunity to show the love of God, to show God's goodness, to walk in his mercy, to walk in his grace, that you and I, that we are the embodiment of God's love. And we need to, that, that he loves us, we need to let his love flow in us and flow through us. And wherever you find yourself, whenever you find yourself, and you have that opportunity to be offended. And in that moment, there is an action before you react. Before you react, would you fill the gap with love? Would you begin to let love be your lens, how you're going to see everything through? Because when you do that, it makes it a whole lot harder to pick up an offense. It makes it a whole lot harder to be bitter and a whole lot easier to be better. A whole lot easier to actually do what it says. I'm overlooking this. I'm going to pass over this. I'm going to avoid this. I'm passing over this offense. I'm not camping out here. I'm not going to let this cripple me. I'm not going to let this hurt me. But I am seeing further. And because of the love that God has for me, and I want to extend that love, I'm filling this gap with love. And this is not going to be a tombstone, that this is just a stepping stone because there's more for me. I am over it. My, my calling, it elevates me. My purpose in Christ, it lifts me. I'm not pulled down by the smaller offenses of this world. The devil wants you to fill the gap with accusations. God wants you to fill the gap with love in your marriages, with your kids, at your workplaces, with your friendships, in your ministry. Can we learn how to extend grace every single time, even when it's not merited? Even when you don't think that they deserve it. Because can I tell you what? None of us deserved the mercy and grace that God extends to us every single day. The, the Bible says his mercies are new every single day. None of us deserve that. But yet he gives it. And so why do we hold on to bitterness? Why do we hold on to an offense? Because it's just robbing us. It's just robbing you and it's just robbing me. Your life is too short. Your calling is too great to be offended by something so small and really insignificant. In the grand scheme of things, that's what it is. So I want to do this. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you this morning. And my prayer is that you are going to learn. And even in those areas right now where you've been filling the gap with accusations, that that's going to stop. And you're going to learn how to fill the gap with love. So, Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus that by your power and through your grace that you would empower us your church to show love in every situation, in every circumstance. That God, that no longer would we fill the gap with accusations. God, when we're wrong, when we have the opportunity to be bitter, when we have the opportunity to be offended, when something is said to us or done to us, that we would learn how to fill the gap with love. That your lens of love would be the lens that we view everything through. Your mercy and your grace would move us and would compel us to live a life full of compassion every single day. God, I pray right now that you would burn this truth into our hearts. That every time, every moment, every opportunity we're distracted by something small, that you would actually elevate our hearts to a higher calling. 
a stronger purpose. God, that it's because of that that we would not step in to the offense. We would not go for the bait of the enemy and allow that trap to ensnare us. But Father, we would learn how to walk in forgiveness. Even as Jesus, when he was on the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. God, that we would learn how to walk in that forgiveness every single day with our families, with our friends, wherever we go, that we would not give the enemy an opportunity to ensnare us. Father, we need you. God, we so desperately need you. Forgive us for living offended lives. Forgive us for, for driving wedges into our relationships. And God, not being an example of your love every single day, but actually doing exactly what the enemy wants us to do, accusing others. So Lord, today we make the choice to pass over, to overlook the offenses in our life and understand in the overlooking is where we find freedom. In the forgiving is where we find freedom. And we're thankful, God, that you did that for us and now we want to do it for others. Tell you what, if you're here today and you're living an offended life and, and maybe you're just struggling and hurting and Jesus is not the foundation. And what does that mean is you've never come to that place where you said yes to Jesus. Because here's the deal, what, what we understand as believers is that with Christ, all things are possible. All things are possible. That you and I, that we can live an offended life. Uh, 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 sorry, an unoffended life with Christ. Apart from Christ, man, it's tough. It's hard. And so for you, maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're hurting. Maybe you're just kind of empty and void in your life. And you're, you're at this place where you thought you've tried everything. You've tried relationships. You've tried a job. You've tried money. You've got it all, but it's leaving you empty. You've tried to live your own way and it's got you in a life of addiction, in a life of regret, in a life of bitterness, in a life of living offended. And you're thinking there's got to be more than this. And Jesus is the baseline. It starts there. That God loved you and I so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for us, to make a way for us so we can live a free life. And we need to come to that place. And just because he did it, did it doesn't mean we now just kind of get to walk in it. We need to make the choice to say, Jesus, I need you. I can't do this on my own. Would you forgive my sin? Would you make me clean? I take your mercy and your grace and, and I need that for my life. That is what is missing. So today I make the choice to surrender my life to you, Jesus. And when we do that, the Bible says we're saved. When we confess with our mouth that he's Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that it wasn't just a cool story that we share at Easter, but it was the ultimate sacrifice for the forgiveness of your sin and my sin. And when we acknowledge that, the Bible says we're saved. And now all of a sudden we get to walk this life with purpose, with passion. We get to walk this life with absolute ability to live free from offense, to live free from sin, to, to walk in the fullness that God has for you and I. But it starts with Jesus. So I'd love to pray with you. I'm not talking about you've struggled with sin. I'm talking about you've never said yes to Jesus. We want to pray with you. We do it every single week here at the church. Why? Because we believe in it. We believe Jesus is the answer for everything you are looking for. Some of you find that hard to believe. I'm telling you, that's why the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because once you experience it, you're, you're going to say, why did I not do this sooner? So I'm going to ask, I'm going to pray a prayer. We're all going to pray together. And again, if, if you pray this prayer, and again, we want you to reach out to us because we want you to understand you're not alone on this journey. That, that you, we're here, we want to see you live the most amazing life. So let's all pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, today I admit, man, I'm a sinner. And I need your forgiveness. And I thank you that your son Jesus died for me so I can have life. Today, I give you my life. Holy Spirit, would you fill me today? so I can follow you, serve you all the days of my life. My life is no longer my own. Today I surrender it to you. In your wonderful name I pray. Amen.
Amen. Well, bless you guys. Again, I want you this week, I'm going to challenge you. You fill that gap with love. And again, next week, starting Thursday, we're opening up our doors. We're back live here on Thursday, then again on Sunday. And we want to see you out here. Have yourself an incredible week. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., as we unpack this topic a little bit further in our morning devotions. Bless you guys. Have an incredible Sunday.